Hi, I'm Mike. I'm going to be your tour guide today as I take you through the brand new Lumion 8. I want to show you how to get around inside the program, but I also want you to realize how Lumion can elevate your design workflow. Forget what you know about rendering. Lumion is different. Lumion is truly the fastest and easiest rendering program, and it produces stunning results. Lumion's intuitive interface, massive object library, and impressive visual styles mean you can visualize it yourself. No need to outsource anymore. Beautiful renders are now within reach. Let me show you how. Once you've installed Lumion and clicked to start it up, a benchmark process will check the speed of your computer. The results are shown by this bar at the bottom. Don't ignore the recommended specs and don't skimp on hardware. You will need a good graphics card to get the most out of Lumion. This computer has an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti card. All of the benchmark bars are green, which means this setup is going to rip. You can rerun the benchmark if you install new hardware, but for now, we are all good. The news and learning section on the start screen links out to helpful blogs, events, and tutorials. These items update often, so make sure you check them out every time you start Lumion. The first tab at the top is a standard start page with six environments. You can use these to begin building your own environment. The second tab has nine pre-made examples, fully textured, lit, and ready to render. These are great for exploring more advanced techniques and learning how the pros do it. On the third tab, you can load a scene you have previously made in Lumion. The last tab allows you to save a scene to your hard disk or network. Click on the language button. Our language is set to English, but you can choose from many different languages without installing a different version of Lumion. Let's get started with a plain empty scene. Welcome to build mode. This is where you will spend most of your time working, creating your Lumion scene. There are two main areas of the user interface you will access in build mode. At the bottom right, you can access the photo, movie, and panorama studios. This is where you will create stills, animations, virtual tours, and virtual reality. You can also manage your files and settings here. I like to keep my settings maxed out because I know my computer can handle it. If you are falling short on the benchmarks or have a large Lumion scene, you might consider backing down these settings to increase computer performance. Hovering over the question mark overlays the screen with some helpful tips. If you're ever lost, look for some help in build mode and even in the photo, movie, and panorama studios. In build mode, there are four additional tabs at the bottom left, weather, landscape, materials, and objects. On the objects tab, there are several different category tabs to access the expansive Lumion object library. Right now, we need to import a model that we created outside of Lumion. This will be the foundation of our scene. I'm going to import a SketchUp file, but the truth is that just about any 3D modeling program will produce a file that can be used in Lumion. There are several options for direct imports and add-ons for Revit and Rhino that create clean exports for use in Lumion. To navigate in Lumion, use the WASD keys to move forwards, left, back, or right. Q&E move the camera up and down, Hold down the right click and move your mouse to look around. A good combination, which gets you anywhere, is to hold down the W key and the right mouse button at the same time, then move the mouse to steer. These icons on the lower menu allow you to move, resize, and rotate any object. To be more precise, use the Move Mode tab to position the model's origin at 050 in Lumion. I like my models to sit a little higher than the ground plane. Now select the Materials tab on the left. Hovering your mouse above any material highlights it. If you click on a material, you will see the Lumion Material Library appear. There are four main categories of materials, Nature, Indoor, Outdoor, and Custom. Each has several subtabs. You can either swap an imported material with a Lumion material, or you can add Lumion properties to an imported material. Glass, Grass, and water are good candidates to be swapped out and replaced by the animated, optimized, realistic Lumion materials. Lumion has trademarked pure glass presets available in the Outdoor Materials tab. You can change the specific properties of any glass style that you select. Adjust the sliders to get the look you want. I like a little relief in my glass to take the computer edge off. If you're good with texturing in your modeling program, it is best to add Lumion properties 
to the imported materials. Make it a standard material and adjust the gloss, reflectivity, and relief. There are several other tabs to adjust position, orientation, transparency, settings, weathering, and foliage. With these sliders, it's easy to achieve an authentic look. While I'm landlocked in Denver, you might be designing lake cabins in Minnesota or skyscrapers in Miami or beachfront mansions in Malibu. Regardless of your project's location, it's easy to control the environment in Lumion. Even water is easy. So let's step out of Denver for a moment and take a look at this project on the coast. The second tab on the left opens the landscape functions and the bottom menu now offers different options. Let's switch on the grass. Using the sliders, you can adjust the size, height, and wildness. You can change the overall style of the landscape here. If you mark your model as terrain, you can paint it like this. Get the look you want by adjusting the pattern, brush size, and speed. You can add an ocean with one click. Adjust several properties using the sliders to create the right look. The top button on the left gets us the weather options. You can change the sun direction and height using the dials at the bottom left. You can select from several cloud types and easily control the amount of clouds using the slider. All right, back to Denver. The lowest button on the left gets us back to the object tab where we can start to detail our scene. There's a lot of objects to choose from. Hover on the category buttons to see their names. Now click on the object thumbnail. Notice the size of this collection. Each of the tabs has several subtabs. You can sort through any collection with a search. Let's try oak. Click on a tree, then click in build mode to place it. All of these landscape objects are pre-animated, truly optimized for Lumion. They even respond to weather. You can see it gently blowing in the breeze here. You can get your planting plan modeled really fast using the mass placement function. Click to start the line, then hold control to add points. This menu pops up for you to adjust spacing, rotation, number, and offsets. You can add other objects to the mass placement path and they will be mixed in. You can always edit an object's properties by clicking a node with the move tool. Adjust the transparency of a tree to help your design show through. If you move the mouse to the top of the screen, layers will appear. You can have up to 20 layers. It's good practice to assign different object types to different layers. I like to use layers to separate imports, lights, landscape elements, and entourage objects. You can see I'm switching on the layers. This is a scene built earlier, but the layers were hidden. Looks pretty good. I think we're ready to take some photos. The camera icon on the right gets us to the photo studio. This is where you can take snapshots of the scene you've built. The interface changes a bit, but you still move around your scene with the same navigation controls you use in build mode. You can save camera locations by clicking above the camera slots at the bottom of the screen. Clicking on any stored location puts the camera back in that spot in your scene. The dots at the bottom get you access to each photo set. There's room for 100 cameras. Styles are truly the easy button in Lumion. Click on a style to get stunning results with very little effort. There are realistic and sketchy styles. I like to use a sketchy style early in the design process. This way it doesn't feel like I've worked everything out just yet. It leaves a little to the client's imagination. It can also make an incomplete model look a little more intentional. Here are renders of this project using only styles. The FX button at the top left is the door to Lumion's effects. Add several effects to build your own unique blend of visual herbs and spices. There are several different effects categories like light and shadow, camera, scene and animation, weather and climate, sketch, and colors. Let's start with the sun effect. With this effect, you can change the height, direction, brightness, and size of the sun. These effects are only applied to this specific shot. The sun is casting pretty harsh shadows in this scene. Add the shadows effect to turn on the all new soft shadows and fine detail shadows. Now let's add the skylight effect. It's a brand new technology that simulates daylight. Here's an example of how the skylight effect brings more daylight into your design. Let's add another world effect, reflections. This is a very useful effect for achieving more realism. 
Lumion invented speed ray reflections, and switching it on improves reflections without much effect on computer performance. The pencil allows you to add reflection planes to specific surfaces. These are perfect reflections, but they have a bigger effect on computer performance. I've just skipped forward having added a number of effects to the still image. You can save your unique stack of effects to a file for later use. Load the effects on each camera to save yourself some clicks. Render the current shot, photo set, or render and upload to MyLumion where you can easily manage and share your work. Switch to the movie studio by clicking the icon on the lower right. This is where you become a director. Your job is to tell the story of your design. Let's record a camera path. Like before, you move around your scene clicking the camera icon to store camera locations. The difference now is that Lumion fills in the camera path between the locations to make a movie clip. You can change the speed of the clip with these arrows. Slower is always better. Let's create another clip by selecting an empty slot. Now we've got two clips. You can drag and drop to change the clip order. You can play the clips back individually or all together. You'll see a vertical line separating the clips when you play them back all together. Effect stacks work in all of the different studios. Let's load our effect stack for a daytime render. The handheld camera effect has been updated in Lumion 8, so you can now look at a target, add the handheld camera effect, enable the look at fixed point option, click the target button, then click on an object to look at. Keyframes allow you to animate effects. Click on the wave symbol next to the effect slider. A keyframe line will be added to the playback bar. Scrub through the clip to a different point. Then click the wave symbol again to add another keyframe. You can see that the sun height moves as the clip progresses. It's a neat way to create a sunset. Do the same to the clouds to create a true time-lapse effect. The Mass Move tool allows you to animate a busy street with very little effort. Click on the pencil to edit the effect. You can play back the Mass Move path to check out how it looks. You can adjust various things like car speed and direction. Pressing the Recalculate button shows how it looks with the new settings. The Motion Blur effect will complement this clip nicely. Now let's render the whole movie by clicking on the green button at the bottom right. You get a menu which allows you to choose the render settings. Keep in mind there's a trade-off between quality and render time. 5 star, 30 frames per second at Ultra HD 4K is a very high quality output. You will be prompted for a file name and location. Render time depends on chosen quality level, graphics card, and the length and complexity of your movie. This is a brief glimpse of the rendered output. Pretty spectacular. Now let's take a look at the Panorama Studio. Again, the interface changes a bit, but the idea is the same. Move around your scene, select locations, and label each one. Each location will eventually be rendered as a 360 panorama and uploaded to MyLumion for sharing and viewing online, or for use in a virtual reality headset. We now have six locations. We will load the effect stack that we created earlier to each of the positions. Let's first render as a virtual reality output suitable for the Gear VR, Google Cardboard, Oculus, and HTC Vive. There's a big difference in the time it takes to render draft quality versus production quality. So, unless it's really necessary, select draft quality. You can also render the panoramas to MyLumion. This will send an email with a unique link to your online render. This link can then be forwarded to anyone you like so they can navigate around the latest design right away on a phone, tablet, or computer. It's rendering to MyLumion now. Fast forward, we can now view the renders on the MyLumion website. You can jump between viewpoints by enabling these eye symbols. Or you can jump between them in order using the arrows at the bottom left. Clicking on the Settings button in the Panorama Studio takes you to your online management environment. This allows you to view and manage all of your MyLumion projects. The most powerful feature in Lumion is its seamless workflow. 
You can continue to make changes in your model throughout the design process and easily reload it back into Lumion. Click on a texture, then click on the menu button and choose Reimport Model. The changes are visible in the Photo, Movie, and Panorama Studios. Re-export and you are off to the next presentation. This is truly a seamless workflow. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this tour of Lumion. I hope you picked up some valuable tips and tricks along the way and ultimately realized how Lumion can elevate your design process. Now, be sure to check out some of our other more in-depth step-by-step tutorials to pick up on some more advanced techniques. At this point, don't be shy. Open Lumion, get in there, and start making some beautiful renders. You can do it. I'll see you next time.